And hello, everybody. Welcome on back to Bud Stalking Bud. It's HT. It's Sean. It's Jared. How we doing? We're doing good this week. Yeah, doing great, man. Busy. busy yeah, always busy. I can't wait to recap our last episode. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna uh, have a couple stories or current events we're gonna talk about. But right now, it's kind of snowing in our area. Yeah, I can't. I mean, like I I've don't seen get snow it. on the mountains, but like legitimately videos of people in their front yard. Yeah, in the snow. I, I don't get it. And then, like in Portland, it's like they said it was going to be like an inch of rain. They got a six-hour blizzard. Hmm. Like I don't know. the The world's getting angry or something. I thought it was global warming. I thought things were. I, I said the same thing, boss. Know. And you know what? I was looking it up, and it says it's going to be the <laughs> coldest summer we've had in years. I'm like, really? Oh, I, I still don't really? get. I don't. I I don't know. Could that? Yeah. I need an excuse to get my beach bod in shape, and yeah, these yeah. cold summers are like, what, what am I well, supposed hey, to do? Like, hey, yeah. welcome to HT's life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's HT's excuse. Like, <laughs> yeah, just, I haven't even gotten shape. It's like, it's, it's supposed to be a cold summer. Yeah, like, cold I, summer. Just, no no reason. point. <laughs> yeah. I was told 18 years ago it's going to be a yeah. cold summer this year. <laughs> Farmer's Almanac, Big that's red. what he's following. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Oh, my God. So, two last, weeks ago. Was it two weeks? Yeah, yeah, two weeks ago, Smoke I'm, Sesh I'm episode. Blessed. Oh, my God. If you God. haven't watched it, still up on the YouTube. It's a fun. It you, was a fun. You time. gotta watch it. I, if for no other reason than to see Mel J's spaceship joint that he rolled, I mean, for no other reason than that, that's worth enough of it. I actually still have what's left of it sealed in a bag, in a container in the fridge. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, so, so maybe next one of these weeks we'll yeah. light it back up. Or something. <laughs> no, uh, I kind of want Dev on retainer, just oh. rolling me blunts all day. Mm, my God! So we, Snoop Dogg's got one. Yeah, he yeah. Does. He does. <laughs> yeah. Um, we and she's so cool too. That also yeah. is like fun to hang out with. So it's like, oh yeah, uh, you please be the resident roller. The the place we were smoking at, um, of multiple days later, did not smell of cannabis smoke at all. It really didn't. But it smelled blunts. You smelled that tobacco paper. For sure. I, I threw a few purifiers in there, closed the door, um, came back in two days later, and it was like, oh, my God, are, are we in the South right now? Is, it har <laughs> is this harvest season? <laughs> it, was, it was pretty strong, but it was definitely worth it. Do you have a favorite part? Of the episode? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I loved it when Jared was calling out all of the things on the, the wheel of eating, the eat wheel, but because I knew that he didn't know what any of them were. Right. Because Wyatt had come up with the idea two hours before, he had put it behind a, a curtain and then brought it out. So yeah. then when Jared was like, is that marshmallows <laughs> on applesauce yeah, or like so weird. whatever <laughs> they were? Um, I and he just kept getting him. It was like one after another after another. I just I was like, See, that okay. So I did cool. mention a while ago that I was thinking about signing up for Wipeout, and, mm -hmm. and I was trying to get Boss to do it with me. Oh. You guys would dominate. It's yeah. still an option. It's on the table. I keep thinking there, about it. I'm like, the grand prize is fifty grand. Oh yeah, I'll like take that. I'm like, hello. You could dominate. But would, you would also make a fool of yourself. Too. Yeah, it would be hilarious. Yeah, you wouldn't like you and it's yeah team play one hundred percent. Yeah, be, and we could just literally cover ourselves in source source merch. <laughs> That's a good idea. Bandanas, we, we just, the sweatbands around the wrist. Oh, you got to look because they 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 want people that are like uh, outrageous. Yeah, outrageous. Well, you already got yeah. him, and then you got you were like. I'm his boss. And yeah, like, yeah I would, he's my motherfucking boss. <laughs> I, I would be hilarious. I would try yeah. really hard, and then when I'm about to get knocked off something, try to do like a double gainer or something oh, yeah. that, like, you know, <laughs> and then it doesn't turn out well, and then you're mm -hmm. then you're clipped out from the internet for the rest of eternity. I mean, I think we know. should do it. Yeah, I, free I, advertising. I'm legit. Like, I yeah. kind of want to try it. I would so try it. I just think it would be hilarious. You and Yasper. And just the tall ass the people. Like, the yeah. Ass. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know what? Towers. You asked me what my favorite part was. I just had this thought. My favorite part may have been that there's not going to be an embarrassing clip living on the internet forever. No. Like that That may be my favorite takeaway from it all. No. There, we did a pretty good job. Yeah. 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 It was funny. We did yeah. go so hard in the paint, though. So we're like, hey, this is the first episode. We're going to have consumption on. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be kind of fun. <laughs> Most people would be like, oh, let's keep it chill. It's just like, you know, pass around one little zigzag joint, you know, something easy. No. No, we got cross joints. We got the craziest <laughs> spaceship joint ever. We got a blunt that, that was the size was of my forearm. Fire. So good. So yeah. Good. It was it was something so else. So good. I also was covered in ash. 
crash at the end of it all. Yeah, I, I believe that, that, that UFO was kinda, joint. Yeah, that was <laughs> it with the yeah, UFO joint. I mean, yeah, the paper yeah. alone, yeah. just like burning the yeah. top off to get it to become the, a bowl. Is, the, yeah, and I know at one point I had a, a part of the crucifix fall on me, and I thought, yeah. oh my god, this is like, sacrilegious. That was like sure. <laughs> minutes in, dude. We had just started, and it was like, pfft. yeah. <laughs> That is kind of sacrilegious. I wonder if we offended anybody with uh, I mean, with our crucifix joint. We're, we're smoking pot, so we're already offending somebody. Yeah, we're already offending somebody for sure. But there's <laughs> I mean, pot churches. Hold yeah, on. True. Like, like, Cat Williams already went through this. He's like, uh -huh. it's a plant. It grows like that. And if you so happen to set it on fire, it may have some effects. Yeah. To yeah, quote yeah. directly. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually, I mean, I think cannabis, well, I don't think cannabis was a thing before the Bible was written. So like, you know, there you go. It's, it predates. Um, there is a uh, if you if you look up in Oakland, there's a psilocybin church in uh, in Oakland mm -hmm. um, that you can go to, and they've uh, I don't know they're probably doing church for tax purposes, but they also have a like a walk up we'll call it dispensary, but a walk up shop that's. I don't know if it's on the church grounds. I don't know if you have to like splash holy water to get in. I'm not sure all the details, yeah. but you, okay. Quick question: Be a member or whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. I walked into um, a smoke shop the other day, mm -hmm. and I saw some actual not psilocybin, but trip chocolate bars that mm. are now legal to sell. Like oh, recently, that but sounds I, like a bath salt knockoff. I don't. I don't <laughs> exactly. Like I don't think it had psilocybin in it because I was looking at the back of it and it, like mm -hmm. you feel like it would say like Did it say right, any maybe, other ma maybe. mushroom on it or any fungus. No, just it just it's really trippy packaging. And then it was called like Trips Chocolate or some sh something like that. I mm. can't remember exactly. But I was I was like interesting. I I almost wanted to buy it just to see. Yeah, I wish yeah. you did. Speaking of mushrooms, um, I was down in L.A. last week. It was like, yeah, I think it was last, yeah, last week. week. A week yeah. ago today. Yeah, we go today. <laughs> exactly. So, I'm, uh, oh, that's why we didn't go. I was out exactly. of town. That's right. So, um, I'm in L.A. doing a bunch of running around for meetings, and I'm at a place looking at bulk flour. There's a thousand pounds in this room, all on these shelves. It's kind of interesting. So we're opening them all up, and uh, in the waiting room, getting ready to go back, there's this homie in an all green jumpsuit with embroidered um, like uh, weed people on them, and some and some mushroom people all over his uh, custom jumpsuit. <laughs> I was like, I need to be friends with this guy, obviously. <laughs> so I find some sort of common thing. We start talking in the waiting room, and we go back. Um, and I noticed, you know, he picks up a few pounds, and they don't f or anything like that. I'm like, okay, all right, I see, I see where this is going. So then, of course, I'm gonna like hit him up as we're walking out and just see what's good. And he asked me, he's like, oh, have you ever been downtown to a place that I'm not going to mention on the podcast? I'm like, no, I'm, I've never heard of that before. He's like, oh, yeah, we we, uh, we have a lot of things down there that are for sale. So me being, uh, I, I don't know, ignorant or whatever, I'm like, okay, cool, yeah, I'll maybe, you know, like, I'll, I'll check it out. Well, I get back to my car, start going through my phone, realize my next appointment canceled. So I'm like, oh, hey, I got a little time. So... I just start heading that way, thinking like I'm just gonna like walk in with nobody vouching for me right. or something like that. And I'm kind of I'm have that little bit of a thought in my mind. So I shoot the dude a text like, "Hey man, I'm on my way down there. Um, you know, thank thanks for the uh, the DL on it." And he's like, uh, "You meeting anybody there?" And I'm like, "No, but I probably should be, right?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'll meet you down there on the street." Oh, okay. So now we're in downtown LA. Meet jumpsuit homie. Um, we go. We walk into this building, and it's like a bunch of. Uh, some like Asian restaurant, nothing nice though. Like, you know, downtown LA is not, not a whole lot of nice stuff, but we walk into the, the basement of this building or the ground floor of this building. And it's, you know, there's a security guard that looks like he played in the NFL and it's super beautiful, like all the, all architecturally designed. We go up to the next level. Um, it's a bunch of glass offices, like tall ceilings, kind of loft style. And we walk into one and there is 60 to 100 maybe retail ready psilocybin products from drinks to capsules to tablets to gummies to chocolates you name it all over the walls um like on these cool shelves too it's like super dope looking um uh, and uh yeah they just are a kind of a distribution hub for for everything psilocybin so i went on a, a shopping spree, <laughs> went on a shopping spree. <laughs> like so much fun yeah it was it was really cool it was really cool and, and you know he's he says like oh you know a lot of times we have other stuff you know mdma um oh, dmt things like that he's like we're out right now uh, which is actually what he told me he had at the uh, at the cannabis spot, which is kind of the reason I was like, oh, cool, I'll come check it out. But it, it was still, uh, all the mushroom stuff was still pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's very professional, but very... Very both of those things for sure. Super clean looking. It was it was awesome. Well, it was an awesome when you experience. first told me, I'm like, oh, maybe they're just getting ready. They're like getting ready for the boom of legalization in the mm -hmm. next four years Which, or whatever. If if it does come. 
fire. Yeah. That's going to be so legit. Yeah. They'll be like perfect. Yeah. It, but I think they are kind of posi- – everybody's doing that. Everybody's yeah. positioning themselves. But there is a group of people that no matter if it becomes legal or not become legal, right. they're going to stay black. Um, and – you know, judging by what's happening to the legal cannabis industry in California, I almost don't blame them. Oh, that's a great segue. Yeah, that's a great segue. That's a great segue. Yeah, yeah, a great segue. Um, yeah, I guess on that point, I just re- I was just reading this article a little bit ago that um, in 2022, the uh, cannabis crop is down 40 percent, despite production going up by 12 percent so it's basically like they say hey let's put a let's put a dollar value on all of the cannabis crop that was produced um like i call a cultivation value and they say okay wow in 2022 it's down 40 percent but the weight of what's produced is up 12 percent and it's all um you know the bottom fell out basically because of illicit markets because of over regulation um i personally know three um high level uh operators that recently closed their closed their doors, gave up their, their state licenses. But I know these people, they're still running they're, They don't go away. I mean, they've, they've, they were here before legalization. They're, they're still here now, just in a different yeah. fashion. So it's kind of an interesting thing. So how do you feel about that being in the legal business? Mm. Like I, you know, you're like, you do you like we're in the same, yeah. business, like good, yeah, it makes but, my wheels turn. I make yeah. my wheels turn a lot. I mean, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have issues against, um, against the market but i definitely definitely hurts us um it makes my wheels turn a lot about uh about what financially makes money what financially doesn't make money what is what what level of looking over your shoulder are you worth doing is it worth doing all those type of things but um the uh let's see the the be the, the state of California just offered a twenty million dollar grant. Is yep. that what you had heard? Yeah. So they offered a twenty million dollars, they put twenty million dollars up in grant funds and they said, Hey, local municipalities, whether it's county, cities, you can apply for this grant money and the grant money is to help um get licensed retailers in your area. Uh, so I, I kind of looked, I was reading through the article and I was kind of reading through a few of the ways that they want you to, um, apply what the application process was like. And there was kind of two components. Like one, are you going to go after traditional market and, you know, unregulated market people? Um, are you going to use this money to help establish some rules and to hire enough people to process applications for legal retailers? Um, or what, of course, maybe I'm a pessimist, but my mind went to, are you going to take this money, ramp up your enforcement, and right. start cracking down on legal companies? Because that's that's what a lot of times ends up happening. Is it's way easier for the cannabis enforcement people to come after legal companies because because course we're out in the open. Um, I guarantee you, if I wasn't out in the open, it'd be very hard to find me. But it's very easy to find me right now. And so a lot of times it just they end up over. Um, overwatching you over yeah. over controlling you and it's kind of a counterintuitive to the whole goal of getting more retailers out there yeah and but, putting money into the actual state that's what they want to do but now it's just kind of making everybody mm-hmm. revert backwards mm-hmm. i think it's 60 percent of california does not allow any licensed cannabis companies yeah. So that's why when people say that the, the, the traditional market, unregulated market is, you know, I've heard eight times as big, I've heard 10 times as big, whatever, as, as the licensed market. That's why 60% of the state is saying, no, you cannot operate out of here. Um, me and Jared this morning, we're meeting on trying to um, launch our service in Bakersfield. And you look at the entire county of Bakersfield, there's two cities, towns, I'll call them, um, that allow you to be licensed out of there. One of them is like an hour and a half out of Baker, which is the biggest town in the city is Bakersfield. And then the other one is like 20 minutes outside, but there's nothing there. It's like a smallest little town in the world. I don't think you could even probably find a facility that you could bring to licensure. Hmm. So, uh, that's just an example of that. It's like, Hey, you got this huge County with probably a million people in it, Kern County, and they have two places to be licensed out of, but you Google dispensary Bakersfield, you know, you, you there's no licenses that are available there. There's Google listings for, for, for unregulated black market spots where you, you know, walk in and buy stuff. They just don't care. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically they just don't care. Or 
or it's it's a misdemeanor. So you get hit, you move to the next one. You get hit, you move to the next one. You get hit, you move to the next one. Okay, cool. We stored, you know, a, a, a sixteenth of our product and a none of our cash on site. Okay, oh, you got five pounds. Awesome. I got five hundred pounds in a place that you don't know about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Then they're just on to the next one, on to the next one. I don't hate the player. I hate the game, though. I just want to put that out there. Like, if yeah. you're one of those people out there doing no shade at you at all, keep you know do do your yeah, thing. Do you do like, you. I, I had no hate on you at all. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just the reality of, uh, reality of the industry. Do you think it'll change? Mm, yeah, the I'm better. sure. I'm sure over time, eventually, eventually when a bunch of other states, uh, loosen up and interstate commerce happens. It's really federal is yeah, what we're waiting for. I would think that might, that might lower, especially when interstate commerce happens. Cause right now California's tax structure on it is, is ridiculous. In- insane. Yeah. It's, it's insane. So maybe when there's some more, if you've interstate tr- commerce happens, you're selling all these other States. Well, California can't survive because the other States have much lower tax status. They, then they redo California cannabis taxes. Then some of these people that are on the traditional market will be willing to come over because they know they don't have to lose, you know, 80% in taxes. Mm-hmm. So I could see I could see that maybe moving the needle, but I think we're talking uh, you know decades. Uh, yeah. This this isn't going to be an overnight thing. I don't you know don't even know if I'll still see it happen. Like, do you guys see any different drop off at all with the taxes going up in our like the seventeen percent after the sale? Mm-hmm. Has that changed? Like people as a driver, people bitch to me all the time. Like, what's this twenty five dollars in taxes? I'm like, I don't know. I'm paying the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Um, I think. We didn't see any sales go down in it. I've seen a few, you know, a few frustrated customers, yeah. but really, again, the, we just we used to include all the taxes in the sale price, right. but from the state came down on us and said, "Hey, you need to, from a bookkeeping standpoint, you need to separate them out, so you know we can see what you're charging." So we end up having to separate them out at the end of the sale. Right. So I don't know. The customers aren't paying any more money than they were, which is what I always reply to them when it's like, hey, it's the same price as it's been last year, the year yeah. before, the year before. We're just itemizing the taxes on the end, which in previously we'd included them in the price just to kind of give you that. Yeah. Yeah. Leave you a better taste in your mouth that you're not yeah. having to pay 40% taxes at checkout. It's mm-hmm. ridiculous. Yeah. But when I when I say that, I'm like, well, my boss actually like wanted to care for the customers and lowered the price. And when they hear that, and I'm like, other places didn't do that. They just yeah. take the money. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, okay. So yeah, well, other places have been, which, you know, it's just like either way, but other places have been charging that 40% tax at checkout all along. Oh, okay. I made a, a, a decision as a business to say, hey, I want, I'm about customer experience, obviously. That's like what I preach all the time is yeah. customer experience, customer service, that type of stuff. So um, I thought offering a... Uh, a lower um, percentage of tax at checkout would lead to a better customer experience. Yeah. Which to build a customer basis off of a price line that looks higher mm-hmm. is it's a, hard. Uh, yeah, extremely yeah. impressive. And then like once customers started to figure it out, mm-hmm. I remember when I was first starting, we get customer calls and they would be like, "Oh, like why is your stizzy?" 50 bucks and I can go to Megan's and get it for 45 and mm-hmm. I'm like okay well go to Megan's and you buy that stizzy and then come here and buy one from us and compare the receipts tell me which one yeah you know yeah and we're gonna beat them on the end of the receipt but you're exactly right Jared it's really hard to gain traction a little bit when you're advertising a higher price um more people want to go somewhere else exactly and, and then once they realize they're like oh I'm actually not getting hit with that insane yeah. amount because yeah sometimes you walk into those shops and you pay a hundred bucks and yeah, you are yeah. Four, it's one hundred forty. It's about forty yep. percent tax. Yeah, so you, right. yeah, you'd make a hundred dollar if you especially have if you're in San Luis Obispo. Yeah, when the taxes are up, they're up a little bit. Yeah, higher. crazy already. So, yeah, for sure. Um, cannabis is uh, stinking up Lompoc. I guess. I guess. Well, I, I was just looking up stuff for this uh, episode, and there was like a right into the to the Sun Times or the Sun in uh, in Santa Maria. And Lompoc was talking about how it's going to be growing season and they don't like the smell. It's hazardous to their health. Mm. They can't sleep at night. They have to run their heater more because they have to make it where their air is running. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I, I, I read that too. Um, that was one of the interesting things. And I don't know, but I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure there's some validity yeah. to the, com- the complaints. I kind of like the smell, but I understand how people would not like the smell. But one of the main farms that they were complaining about was a mile outside of town. Yeah, and they said, "Oh, when the winds are mo- you know going east, like it blows it into town." And uh, I was like, "That seems uh, like 
quite excessive. A, 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 yeah, excessive. So I'm sure there's some there's some validity to it. I know Santa is that Lompoc's in Santa Barbara County, and I know Santa Barbara County, um, their largest cultivator down there, um, greenhouse cultivator, they just unanimously ruled the board of supervisors unanimously ruled that they had to put carbon filters on their uh, mm -hmm. greenhouses to before they can exit the um, export the air out. So that should help some, but right. these, these outdoor grows that are just outdoor, you're not gonna, you're not getting too much um, it just control. Like we we smell like if you go to like up north, you're gonna get those cow fields. You're gonna go mm -hmm. the garlic when you go up to Gilroy. You're gonna get Cabbage. the broccoli when we on yeah on Cabbage LBR. on the way to Monterey, man. Yeah. That it just seeps into the car. Like, there's so I many other stand. there's so many <laughs> other smells that you can get that are way more offensive, but I think it just it's a little bit I of green. Can't stand. And it's yeah. not, uh, it's not appalling way, smelling. No. Way rather smell ca like cannabis than <laughs> like yeah. cabbage or, yeah. well, yeah, I don't know. There's a few other things. Like, like I get it, but at the same time, like. From a person who grew up around feedlots. Yeah, exactly. You see a feedlot with 5,000 head of cattle in yeah. there. It. It is miles away. And you, I mean, I just don't see how these people live in that, in that type of stuff. So uh, Like that in Hanford. Yeah, seas a seasonally um, a seasonal crop is, is quite a bit different than and then uh, you know I, mean, I don't know this is just a thought off the top of my head but um, I'm I'm thinking back to when I lived where there's a bunch of feedlots and uh, the people that lived around the feedlots all worked at the feedlots right so I think you'd be much less likely to complain and have an issue of it or even find issue with the smell if you're working in it all the time exactly. or if, if you're gaining money from it but you put um, you put a you know a cannabis grow right outside of a city that city is gonna have some haters on it in general and they're gonna mm -hmm. you know find it even more offensive but i'm sure if you know half those most of those if those people worked in the cannabis industry it, right. it may be it may be a different story um but that's actually another thing that happened with legalization that used to not happen is previously to things being legalized you would be you would not be growing so close to cities yeah. you'd be out here you'd be in the mountains somewhere you'd be in los padres you'd be wherever you you, you can get away from people and uh, then legalization happens these huge farms popped up yeah. and they wanted to put the farms as near to this the metropolitan areas as possible for for man for labor for uh, manpower and right. uh so then now we're having a lot of these uh scent issues i just that one thing i never thought of Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, I, I just don't see how I'm, I don't, maybe I haven't like been there, but like, that is a good point. Like when you're around something for a while, like even when I worked at the bait yard, like I was mm -hmm. down there with like frozen fish or, you know, whatever fish all mm -hmm. day. And after, yeah, like 30 minutes, you just can't smell it anymore. It just yeah. goes away. The, the receptors get saturated, you know, yeah, <sighs> you have these receptors in your brain that sense that smell and they just get saturated. Um, and you know, you, yeah, you can't smell them anymore. I can't smell here. I walk in here and I don't smell anything. Yeah, most um, most days me neither. <laughs> but, yeah, when you're sitting in a car and then somebody comes like to get their product and they're like, "Dude, it smells good in there." I'm like, I, I, "It smells like me farting in here." Yeah, yeah. yeah like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like, smell yeah. that. <laughs> and that's that's yeah. It's it's a serious case. Yeah. There, mm -hmm. There's a few days I walk in here where I'm like. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, so, so okay. We, we actually just had a smell inspection a few weeks ago. We had. Uh, yeah, how did that go? Yeah, it was great. It went great. Um, but yeah, it's actually the same people that are responsible for dealing with the smells outside Lompoc Air Pollution Control District. Um, they just did their yearly inspection, come through here, and they're like, "Yeah, we've never had anybody complain or anything like that." And it's like, "Yeah, you know, we was it the bird from Fruit Loops?" <laughs> yes <laughs> um, you guys but, are good yeah. <laughs> so I don't know it was uh, yeah it went well they were like okay awesome thanks for running your carbon filters and uh, you know we, it's not like we don't we're not a grow and that's really what happens you know we're just processing pounds and we have a huge 20,000 square facility kind of mm -hmm. you know diffuses out a little bit Interesting though, I can. It's, it's going to just continue as uh, as long as these huge companies keep stepping in. Um, I know there was a group in Carpinteria that sued a few cultivators in Carpinteria because they negatively affected their quality of life, and their reasoning was, "Hey, we used to be able to open up our windows and heat and cool our house by you yeah. know by this, but now um, you know because of the smell we can't, and so that's a decrease of their quality of life and filed a lawsuit." I don't know. I kind of see both sides. I, I do. Hate to, I hate to say. I, I definitely. The see The more both we sides. talk about it, I definitely yeah. see it. But at the same time, it's just like, it's not like they had hemp growing on LOVR mm -hmm. for a while there, and it smelled. But it would like when you, but it went away. But I guess if you're sitting there, 
and you're living there and you can't move. Yeah, yeah. Or, or if you live in Santa Barbara, you know, Carpentry of Santa Barbara area, and you have a $1.10 million, some crazy millions of dollars house, and then now it's just all with the smell. I don't know. I looked at a house that was on a farm, and I went to go look at the house, and it was during flowering, um, and it was like... If you're coming out at Los Osos to slow, it was about a 15 minute drive. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it was about a 15 minute drive or 20 minute drive on some back roads, and then there was just like this old house, and it happened to just be on a farm, on a weed farm, um, and it was it was powerfully strong. Uh, but that was an outdoor, and so an outdoor you're only going to get one grow, one one yeah. cultivation a year. So come. October is probably when you crop it. You're to, you're talking thirty to maybe sixty days before that would be where the scent really starts to come in. Uh-huh. So we're only talking like two months out of the year where it's really strong on an outdoor grow. So the, you know greenhouses, light depth situations, you can get a little, a few more grows out of the, each year. So mm-hmm. you may have a few more, you know, maybe double to triple the months that the scent's coming out. But also if it if it is a greenhouse, it also helps hold the scent in a lot. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. This is something. Makes sense. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's going to continually be an option, um, and it's something. I know it's something that the wine industry uses often as an as an excuse to de, to kind of discriminate. Really? Mm-hmm. Because I can see that there's no, uh, you know, the battle for water in California is huge. The battle for land is huge, and uh, so it's kind of a wine cannabis butting of heads mm-hmm. a lot of times. Sheesh. Mm-hmm. Well. Do we have anything else to talk about? No. We've got it. We've got it at 26 minutes. Right? Love that's, it. that's actually pretty good. Yeah. I think yeah. that might be one of the shortest yeah. ones yet. Well, uh, by the time everybody's hearing this, I'll be in Disneyland. Woohoo! So pray for no rain because they're already projecting it. Okay. And like. What do you do if it rains? Wear a poncho. poncho? Yeah. Uh-huh. But at the same time, I'm like, maybe that'll deter people because we're going a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh, you're already on the bad days. Uh, Good days. Nobody's well, going to yes, be there. Yes. I mean, bad days for other people, but so for, so for sure good days. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, like, nobody else is going to be, and if it rains, like, maybe the everything will be shorter. Yeah. So, I'm kind of like, I want mild rain. Yeah. Sprinkle. A little bit that you can tough the deterrent. it out. Yeah. yeah. You got ponchos packed up? Oh, we're, we're doing ponchos. Anna's, like, bringing, like, 18,000 pairs of socks for the girls. There you 18, go. 18,000. <laughs> but, and the cool thing is, because this time around, we, we have the, our hotel, we cross the street. And then you go like not even like half a mile, and then you're at the front gate. Mm-hmm. So if we are you guys do on the get the other st- side, no, we're like uh, uh, in the. Fr- are you guys are in the front? Yeah, not okay. So not on the other side of downtown Disney because yeah. the way you said it, yeah, it made it sound like you had to go all the way through. Where the fir- when we did it the first time, we stayed at the Disneyland Hotel for and or for Lily's. Oh, Michael-ish. so then you're then you are like yeah, right that on the other side of downtown mile. Disney. That was a mile just to get to downtown See, so and then walk through downtown and then how to get there. For like what we used to stay at the Minaj right across the five and it was 0. 0.8 miles yeah. from the hotel's front door to the front door mm-hmm. of, or a front gate of Disneyland. We're you saying you could go home back to the room and change maybe yeah. if you get all So like, like it's literally there. a 10 minute walk when get back to our hotel, dry off, mm-hmm. eat whatever and then go back. So yeah. we're yeah. stoked. Sweet. So just pray for like uh, a it's minimum gonna, amount It's going to snow in LA remember, for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> when when you have the most energy, yes. you got to go get the fast pass at one park and then cross parks, get the fast pass over there and then you go back and enjoy we, your fast we're pass. Actually, we're trying to keep it short, but we actually, we're, we didn't do park hoppers. So we're doing one day Disneyland, uh, one day California Adventure. All right. Last that, day. that makes sense. Yeah. See, we had we always had to do them both because we wanted to drink, yeah. and you can't drink at Disneyland, yeah. but you can drink at California Adventure. Hell yeah. So you get your drinks, you pour them in a Gatorade That's bottle. That's the adventure. And yeah. then you no, walk it, over to Calif- or walk over to Disneyland with your Gatorade bottle full of sangria yeah. or whatever the hell they had. No, Anna, Anna already got like a bunch of boxes of high noons. <laughs> thing yeah. of beers. Yeah, yeah. So true. we're like, we're good to go. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. love it. So, uh, like usual, uh, IG Buds Talking Buds and the Source.cc YouTube is now Buds Talking Buds. You're on the Central Coast. You need your delivery needs from Paso to Santa Barbara. Our website is thesourceslow.com. Uh, everybody, have a good weekend. Have a good week, whatever you are. Stay high. Stay yeah, high. Yeah, have a good everything. <laughs>